Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. <laughs> hello to all the new subscribers thank you guys for joining us um so the weather's been pretty good last three days and uh and it's not bad today but it is starting to cloud up so i need to get a few things done um the mercury the big 135 octamax that was on the boat turned out to be virtually nothing um and so I didn't film any of that. Well, I filmed just a little, but um, it was it, what had happened is on one of the um, injector rails. There's a little. It's a Schrader valve. Looks kind of like what you put where you would air up a car tire. And there's a little keeper on that that had a screw on it, and that fell out. And then the the little Schrader valve either got knocked out or broke off or something when they were messing with the bonnet or something. And I don't know if that was before it had issues or what. But anyway, it lost pressure to the uh, pump canister. And so I replaced that Schrader valve that was broke and uh, screwed it back in, repressurized the system by bleeding it through the lower right hand cylinder and it started right up so there was really that was all that was wrong with it so um but never fear i've had some more stuff come in and we've got a little victim right here that we're going to start on and I've got another one after that and then I've got some ideas on some stuff that I want to do that came in and I'm going to get to showing you that. But
Boobity boo. Let's lower that down. Sorry about that, my battery died. But anyway, um, so I can't remember where I left off. But anyway, so I ground this. You can see there's a pretty good gap there. And then back here, or on this side of where it was broke, you can see that this is beveled. It's like a ditch going through here. I ground it with Diablo die grinder. Diablo! And I ground everything up before I did it, made it nice and shiny. So, I got that big blob there. And now I'm going to take aluminum foil and come in here like so and shape that so it plugs that area up so my rod can't run out in the liquid form. And hopefully I'll be able to fill all that in. And we'll see how it goes. I'll be back. And yes, it has been abused. What's a surprise? But yeah, that little guy right there. Little Suzuki 9.9. Oh. So, let's see what we got. Now these guys that brought this in were so convinced that this thing was um, just a piece of junk that they uh, they just threw it up on a flatbed truck and when they did they snapped the uh, look at that I just snapped that right off. You know, because I said, oh, this thing's a piece of junk. We'll take it over there and see if you can't get it running, but it's a piece of junk. I doubt it'll run. Snap. So, the bonnet was laying on the bed of the flatbed, and the, uh, this was laying on there with the, the busted recoil starter. So, I'll see what I can do about that, but uh, these are great little motors. So, there she is. I didn't see no real sign of creepy crawlies. Alrighty. Okay, I've got my compression tester hooked to the bottom cylinder on this guy. Oh. It says 90 dead on. Ninety on the compressionus on the uh, bottom cylinder. So let's give her a spin on the top. Let's see what's up we get. Motor's pretty dirty inside. Okay, we zeroes right there. Top. Right. 
we got about 95 90 95 top and bottom now I'm gonna share with you guys a trade secret a trade secret okay on these Suzuki's these older two-stroke Suzuki's from the 80's and so if you try and use a spark checker like this one you will not get a spark if you use one like this one where you can dial the the gap in and you put that gap just a little over a sixteenth of an inch or so you will get a spark and from what I found that's that's common in these Suzuki's and they will run on that small gap spark um, but that's what it takes it takes this type of spark checker one that you can adjust they will not it will not work on one of these and oftentimes the spark checkers that have the lights on them such as this right here and so when you pull it it lights up you will not see a light the only one you'll get a spark with that I've seen well I have got them with the light but it's rare most of the time I can dial it into like a sixteenth of an inch and I'll get the the spark on this and this will run these engines um, just fine so I don't know what kind of CDI um, SRC's and stuff are inside their their CDI's but they just don't produce the type of spark like an OMC Johnson Evinrude uh, Yamaha or, or whatever would produce um, you you almost always have to use one of these kinds to, to see the spark and then it'll have to be fairly dark out that's just my tip on these little old Suzuki's this style I'm gonna show you this carb real quick okay so you can see the, the yuck in there that white powder you know and it's just dry and been sitting for God knows how and now look in here you can see all this white yuck and that I mean that's the actual needle see you see all this just just full of it and would this clean up probably um, but there's no fix for that ear being broke off right there and the pin actually broke that out um, it just it's just falling apart um, the fuel pump you can see behind the diaphragm all that crap all up in there and everything so everything's just salty and I have a better carburetor out in my uh, in my conics out there I went and looked at it and it looks better than this one so but th this thing is just it's just gone you know I mean and the engine is certainly repairable um, but his pull start is also the recoil starts broke so you start adding things up and he didn't want to spend the money so this is now a parts motor for me I could put it back in service I, I'll look and see if I have a second recoil all I need is the aluminum housing. The rest of it works on this one. Playful little sea otter.
Harbor's a little bit empty. People out chasing them salmon, halibuts, and the like. And say goodbye, Mr. Sea Otter. Oh, he's got a Suzuki, that's Anderson. Well now, we all know what it means when I wear this hat. It means somebody came a bear in the gifts. It's Christmas time in July. Let's take a look at it. There she is. About a 1990 Evinrude 30 horsepower. It's got the shifter up front. It's got the cable tiller. A lot of good parts, but it went to the bottom of the ocean, then was thrown up at a fishing site on the bank for how many ever years, and then they brought it to me. So, I think I'm going to pop that head off, and I bet there's some good parts in there. Let's look. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, when you're working in a tight spot like that and you ratchet, the bolt is loose. So when I turn my ratchet, instead of it ratcheting, the bolt just sits there and goes back and forth. Take a wrench like this with a nice long handle and open end. And what you're going to do is put this on the shank of the bolt. Not the bolt head, of course the socket's on the bolt head. You take this and put on the bolt. If you can see the bolt down there, I put this. Because my ratchet is just sitting there doing that. So it's not taking out the bolt, it's just flopping the bolt back and forth. So if you take this and put on that bolt, you can apply pressure. With the pressure then, with this hand, put on the bolt. My ratchet does what it's supposed to do and is ratcheting out the bolt. So if you got something like that and it's just sitting there flopping on you, get you a box in ratchet, or I mean a box in wrench, and just put it on the shank of the bolt. And also with this, you can apply outward force pulling the bolt out as you ratchet it out. So it, it works really good. Just thought I'd show you guys that. Because I've got a couple of these I need to take out. I'll be Okay, so you can see what we got here. See this? Oh, yeah, that's that's inside the cylinders. See that? <laughs> so it's Christmas in July. And you say, not a very good present. This one's been submerged in salt water and thrown up on a bank for God knows how many years. Um, hopefully you can see that. Everything's just solid. Just solid rusty. Yummy. But hey, it's Christmas in July. Don't you think it ain't? You see what that is? There's the bonnet right down there. That's a 30 horse. Heaven Rude. Good coils. Yeah, she got some mud in her. But hey. Look at that car. Huh? It's probably full of seawater and yuck too. Look at that recoil start. 
Transom clamps, transom brackets, lower unit. Who knows? There's a lot of good stuff. It's Christmas in July. Okay, so I went ahead and popped that copper off of there. Because I know it was going to be full of yuck. And I just kept the head off. It's sitting right there. And I pulled the coils and power pack off of there. Um, yeah. Because I know they're going to be no good. I'll show you what I found in that old reaper. And this carburetor is totally worth saving right now. You see all that salt? So this engine went went in in the salt water, went under the ocean. See all them boogers? All that salt? Yuck. But we got it. See all that water coming out of there? <laughs> we got it just in time, so I'll clean that all up. That'll be a good. 30 horsepower 1990 and later carb and uh, I'll label it, up, label it all up the head gasket on it looked pretty good too so I labeled it up I'll keep that but yeah I'm gonna clean that carb and then I'll put that in my on my carb rack because it's totally good well I'm not one to tell folks You got an old two-stroke motor, I got some words for you. If you dump it down in the ocean, string it down to Davy Jones. Don't you believe that outboard's ruin when you get back home? Well, find yourself a big trash can or your in-laws swimming pool it in that fresh water that's what you need to do well drain it good lube it up clean that carburetor for sure and I'm gonna tell you that outboard is gonna run just like before yeah now drain it good and dry it off clean that carb for sure and I'll tell you something or run good as before and don't do like this fella done so I uh, still haven't made up my mind on this little Suzuki I still got to go out in my bone pile look around sniff around and see if I have a uh, another recoil starter um, and another carburetor. Um, I do have those on another motor, but for the most part that motor's complete and uh, I don't want to salvage those off of that motor um, if I have um, the stuff to put another recoil starter. I, I vaguely remember that I have a recoil starter um, for one of these that's been gutted, but the aluminum, which is broke on here, I have. Um, and I do believe I have one or two carburetors um, out in my carb shelf that would work on this thing. So I'm going to think about it, whether I want to well, if I have those things, I will put this one together um, and go ahead and get her up and running. But if I don't have those things, I don't think I want to salvage them off that other one because it's still good and it's a runner. But uh, as far as the old Christmas in uh, July motor goes, a lot of good stuff just like this. I got that carburetor off of there and I've got it all cleaned. I've got tri-flow inside, outside, zipped in a bag. I've got the little base gasket, everything 
all in there, labeled up. And uh, I'd say we got this carburetor just in a nick of time because looking at the rest of that motor inside and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've already pulled the electronics and stuff off of it. I'm going to go ahead and pull that recoil starter off there and get that all cleaned up. Dunk it in my outboard tank here because my outboard tank's got salt away and a whole bunch of other goodies in there. So I'll throw it in there and let it soak overnight and get all lubed up and oiled up and slimed up. And uh, then I'll put that on my shelf out there with my recoils. Because if I remember right, these 90 and later, um, might even a little, bit, a little bit before that, had the single dog paw and the goofy flywheel with the cast-in pieces that stick up. So... Um, a little bit harder to come by that particular recoil so I want to salvage that and get it all cleaned up but uh, this little guy we're just gonna have to think on it and see whatever I have out there in my bone pile and park supplies and uh, see if I can come up with the stuff um, there's no doubt in my mind this will be a good little runner and it will run I, I'm not going to part it out because I only need a few parts so it won't end up in the bone pile. It may take me a little bit to get those parts together. I'm hoping not, but it might. But remember, save them parts. And so it's getting a little bit late. You know what that means. It means I'm going to end this video. That's going to be a wrap. And as always, that's one more hack from Kodiak. And thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.